Hi, thank you guys for joining Gordon's Nursery again. And uh, so I'm back again with another story about the Fierce 44. Um, so this is the month of February and um, I'm giving you a couple of history um, about black Americans who shook up the world. So we spoke about, let's see, let's kind of recap here. We spoke about Abbott and I'm just gonna go through the pictures really quick. And it kind of, that does pretty good too. So we talked about, and this 44 leads up to President Barack Obama being the 44th president, just so you guys know who, what, where he sits at in the seat. President Barack Obama was the 44th president. All right, so we talked about Robert Abbott. Robert Abbott gave us voices. So I'll let you see his picture. That's Robert Abbott. He gave us voices, right? So to, uh, to write, um, he made that pathway for writing um, as far as newspapers and magazines. Then we have Alvin Ali. He was a choreographer dancer. He has he had a theater made up for, for him. Um, he was the founder of a dance theater with the tap dancing and the jazz and all that great stuff. Then we have uh, Muhammad Ali, which was a great uh, the greatest boxer ever. Um, and he got his medal. Um, he, he fought his first, he started fighting at 12 and he got his first um, Olympic medal at 18. Right? So that was, that was information for you guys. Uh, I'm sorry, I meant to introduce this little guy here. Um, just in case you don't know him, this is Grant. Um, this is my He's one of my first babies, and I'm going to just do that really quick. Grant's here with us today, and so you could kind of see him. I should have been showing you guys these guys, but I don't. I just kind of run into the story because I have two that I that I, I need to get ready to read. But this is Grant here. This is my little Grant. And Grant was the first little guy I had. So, all right. Now, back to back to our history here so we're going to go on this time and we're going to read about let's see here we're going to talk about Richard Allen right so I'm going to show you this and then you guys uh, will I'll, I'll read you the story Richard Allen okay Richard Allen is the founder of the African African Methodist Epistle Church it's the AME is what they call it okay and this is, this is him. This is Richard Allen, okay? All right, so I'm gonna read you this and you guys listen, okay? And I try to go over this because you guys need to, you might wanna write a paper. When you get older, you're gonna have to write a paper uh, about something um, in February. Again, February is a month that they give uh, African-Americans some recognition. And so this is to help you all not to get the same people that they talk about continuously, but you'll have other people to talk about because there's a lot more people that have done things in the African-American community. All right, so um, he was born into slavery in 1760 and he, he passed away in 1831. Okay, so Richard Allen um, um, was, um, Born into slavery in 1760 in Philadelphia. Um, they say Negro, okay, and I don't really like saying that word, but I'm reading out of this book. Negro Richard struck a deal in 1780 to buy his freedom and that of his brother a few years later. Richard Allen, the name he chose as a free man discovered religion after hearing a Methodist preacher at a secret gathering of slaves in Delaware. But white Methodists didn't want to pray with blacks. So Allen, his wife, Sarah, and others started the Bethel AME Church on July the 29th, 19, 1794, in a converted blacksmith shop in Philadelphia. Allen was the church pastor it was the beginning of the country's first independent black denomination. Okay, denomination means basically the church because there was just one 
church with all black. So that's what they're saying. It, it is. It was the beginning of the countries, not anybody. This country, the country's first independent black denomination, which now now has more than six thousand churches, with about three million members. Um, and it, I'm pretty sure it's more than that. Uh, recognizing that former slaves and freedom needed education, Allen opened a day school. He opened a day school for black children and a night school of his sermons oh, and a night school for adults, um, as well as created church groups to care for the poor. Many of his sermons and published articles attracted slavery and criticized groups that wanted to send blacks back to Africa. Both Allen's family home and Bethel AME were stopped, were stopped on the Underground Railroad, which gave shelter and aid to slaves escaping from the southern borders. Okay, because Richard Allen said, because God doesn't segregate, but humans do. Okay, so what you learned in this, let's recap really quick about Richard Allen. Richard Allen, he was the founder of the AME Church, right? And he started um, school. Uh, he Allen started an open day school for black children. Allen, one of the reasons why you're able to go to school um, is because he he opened a day school for black children, and he did a night school for adults. So you have adults going to school at night time um, that maybe couldn't read or something like that, read or write. And Allen started that right. Um, he, um, let's see what else. But Allen and his family home, the Bethel AME Church, were stops on the Underground Railroad. So there was Underground Railroad. Hopefully, in this book, I didn't see. Hopefully, I get to read that to you about how the Underground Railroad was a way for African Americans to run to freedom. And so he helped he helped with that mr allen helped with those types of things uh, he didn't do all of it but he helped which was a big thing for him so once again mr richard allen was born in 1760 he died in 1831 he was in philadelphia he bought uh, he bought his slavery he bought himself out of slavery and he brought his freedom and his brother a few years later and this, when he discovered religion, and he, he started the Bethel AME Church, and it was the um, it was the beginning of the country's first independent church. So I want you guys to remember that, okay? And he did assist with the underground slavery. Now I'm gonna move on, and I'm gonna read one more for you guys, uh, okay? The next one I'm going to read is by uh, Maya Angelou. So let me show you Maya Angelou. Okay. Okay. So Maya Angelou lived, um, she was born in 1928, right? And she passed away in 2014. Maya Angelou lived a life just as remarkable as the poetry and pro prose she craft. She experienced a traumatic childhood uh, marked by sexual abuse and violence and at one point stopped speaking for five years because of she was traumatized, okay? Um, and I'm not going to get on this subject, but uh, if something like that is happening to you, uh, if, it's, if it's someone doing something to you and you know it's not right and it doesn't feel right, you need to tell your parents or tell someone you trust, okay? And make sure that you tell the person in secrecy and they can get you safe from the person that's harming you, okay? And I'm gonna go on and we're gonna leave that alone, but I needed to put that out there. All right, she experienced a traumatic childhood marked by sexual abuse and violence and at one point stopped speaking for five years. 
five whole years she stopped speaking because she was traumatized you don't have to be you don't have to feel captured you don't have to feel afraid um, there's people out there that will help you so don't ever feel like that you don't have to feel like that anymore during this time she memorized poetry rearranging cadences and reciting Shakespeare sonnets in her head she she remembered this stuff she was re, she was quoting this stuff in her head you guys are very intelligent and you guys have you're so smart um, and don't let anybody tell you you're not smart because you are just because you don't measure up to what they think is smart does not mean that you're not smart understand that and there's something you know and know how to do better than they do so don't ever let somebody feel like you're less all right I'm gonna read on I don't want to go on a soapbox I can go there with the help of a teacher Angelo was able to speak again she used literature she used English she used words to help her recover from trauma but she got pregnant at 16 she found work at San Francisco first African-American female cable car conductor and took many different jobs to support her family later she joined the Harlem Writers Guide and with help from fellow authors James Baldwin James Baldwin is someone that is an awesome writer went on to write she wrote this this is something that Maya Angelou wrote I know why the cage bird sings the first in what would become a seven volume best selling autobiographical series nearly a decade later Angelo finished and still I rise a poetry collected that remains one of the most important works um, that is that is something she wrote I even read that one I think I have it in my in my books um, the other one is her writing earned her many awards including three Grammys she was on TV and she won Grammys for just writing so when you write people are interested in what you write don't let them think that they're don't let them tell you they're not you write something people want to know what you're writing about everybody may not but eventually everybody's going to want to know what you're writing about all right so nearly a decade later Angela finished and finished and still I rise a poetry collected remains one of her most important works her writing earned her many awards including three Grammys and the Presidential Medal of Freedom that's big Angela was also a fearless civil rights activist serving as a conductor for Martin Luther King Jr. the so Southern Christian Leadership Conference C S C L C is the acronyms and working with Malcolm X to establish the organization of African American unity life tried hard to break Angelo but it but in the face of all of, of it all she rose so I don't know if you know about Martin Luther King Jr. or Malcolm X but hopefully in this book it talks about it uh, when you go to school they may talk a little bit about him Martin Luther King does have a day that they have as a presidential I mean as a day to as a holiday some people celebrate it and you guys don't go to school some people still go to school and say they don't care about that so I want you guys to know that these people are important to you because they have created a pathway for you all to go Maya Angelou was a very um, good activist as far as poetry she was she was great at writing and she got acknowledged just for her writing alone and she has books and up on books and so these type of things is something that you guys need to know your brain is powerful knowledge is powerful your words are powerful um, and no one can take that away from you and so for her it, it was it says because she rose to greatness despite cruel hardships you can do the same so these people have, have already went through some things that have caused them trauma but yet she still was able to uh, overcome all of those things and she's a she's very important in our community she's very important in our um, ethnic background because she paved the way for us as well because poetry was not something that was looked upon 
from us uh, and it's just it's it's really it's it's great I don't want to say words where where some of you may not understand but understand this get you a piece of paper get you a pencil begin to write because as you write you learn how to communicate you learn how to speak clearly you learn how to overcome things that others have not and me myself have not overcome but as you begin to grow and you begin to write more and more you become very intelligent and you use your mind this your mind is the biggest muscle you have so i'm leaving you this information again this is for the um february month so we read about richard allen richard allen what he did what what did richard allen do again he he um i don't want to mess it up i want to get it right he 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 came from um philadelphia and he bought his freedom, right? And he bought his brother's freedom uh, a few years later. But he also had a church he started. And it was the Bethlehem Church. And he made the first, he began the first because um, the white uh, community did not want to mix with the black people. And they just didn't want to have to pray with them. So he made a church, right? And it was the, I missed it. I know it was the most the independent one. It was the beginning of the country's first independent black denomination church. Okay. So you guys um, remember Richard Allen, and I'll show you a picture again. Remember Richard Allen? He was, um, he did the church, the black Bethel AME church, right? And we have like thousands upon, we have like more than 6,000 of those churches now. And there's over three, over a million, three million members of that church, Mr. Allen, Mr. Richard Allen. And then we have Maya Angelou who wrote poetry, who overcame some of the things that happened to her in her young age when she was hurt, abused and molested, of course. Um, but she rose and she's nothing just because of her past she had something very traumatizing to her. She didn't let it stop her from becoming who she was today. She's contributed to us. So if you have something going on in your life and it's bad, don't let it stop you. Let Do not let that stop you from being great. Do not let that uh, hinder you from doing what you know that can make you better. Uh, your past is not your future, nor is it your destiny. You have to change your future by leaving your past where, where it's at and making your future great. All right. So I just want to thank you guys for joining Gordon's Nursery. I know I've been on here long rambling, um, but you guys be safe and um, listen to your parents. Listen to those that love you and taking care of you. And we'll be back to read you another story. Um, until then, uh, take care of yourselves and be blessed out there. Don't forget to hit um, thumbs up for us. All right. Bye-bye.